What's up guys, StuDog here. Welcome back to more low rated duelist. Oh yeah, I already saw the seven colored fish, so I stop everything that I'm doing and I record. That's 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 my logic these days. Ooh, here's a random Gen X turbine normal summon. I'll face up Gen X monsters control again for an attack and uh, unfortunately you don't have any other Gen X's, bro, so yeah, where are your Gen X's? LOL. So who do we got here? We got Howl Ring here at 100 going against Babazul. Babazul. This name, who's also at 100, fresh. And Seven Colored Fish apparently got destroyed with his own dark hole. Oh, that's going to leave a mark. And apparently Exchange was activated. Hopefully they actually activated that correctly. And it looks like Cyber Dragon's going to attack the Big Shield Guard now, but the Cyber Dragon doesn't die, though. I mean, you take some light. Wait, what? I don't know. Unless the Lucky Iron Axe is equipped to the Cyber Dragon, which even if that's the case, it still doesn't technically have enough tech to... I don't even know what just happened there. It seems like Cyber Dragon just attacked the Big Show Gardener, and for some magical reason, the Cyber Dragon died? What? Oh my god. Big shout out to Pokemon Umbreon here. Trying to do a space bar contest here in the Watchers chat. Oh yeah, man. Good to have good old Umbreon back. And low rated duelist means a lot. Haven't even mentioned the seven colored fish yet. Seriously. Not every day we see a rare rainbow fish that has never, and I repeat, never been caught by mortal man. No one has ever caught this fish. It's unbelievable. It's It's insane. So it looks like this Lucky Iron Axe is equipped to the, whatever this is, I can't even read, the Commander Gotham's Swordsmaster. I'll face up Saber Monsters, gain for an attack, I'll face up Gen X Monsters. Wow, that's actually hilarious, both these guys have the same exact effect. And they actually count for themselves, so this actually is 2,500 attack and this guy is 28, right? Because it does count for itself. Here's a King's Knight normal summon from Howl Ring. And he's viewing his graveyard here. <laughs> Don't really know what this King Knight is actually going to accomplish, but yeah, it's going to attack the Gen X Turbine, but for, for, yeah, yeah, you're going to regret that, man. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you're going to regret that. As this has 1800 attack because of its effect. So hard to read. <laughs> Hey Stewie, where is the effing pizza? <laughs> I know, right? Don't don't you know Umbreon? 1600 is indeed greater than 1800. And he's just gonna quit. All right, all right. Oh, that that sucked. It still has 1800 attack. Well, I. What do you mean still? It it always had it. Not like it had it once and then it lost it. <laughs> it's still. And then we can see a Rage Quit from Howl Ring. Yep, you messed that up, son. So we're going to be pausing the video and getting another duel in, guys. Big shout out to the Rage Quits, man. All right, guys, we're back with another game here. We're going to be stalking Babazool as, you know, he's playing the Seven Colored Fish. And I really want to see the Seven Colored Fish played again because it's my favorite card of all time. You can't just summon a monster in defense. Yeah, you didn't know that, guys? You can't just normal summon in face-up defense mode. There's still people out there to this day. That don't know you can't just normal summon and face it defense mode. It's unbelievable, man. So here's the normal summon of a heroic challenger night watchman in face up defense mode here. And this has some pretty terrible stats. I don't even know why you would play this in defense mode. Only 300 stats. This card attacks a defense monster your opponent controls. Before damage calc, you can destroy that monster. Because that's somewhat decent. And let's see what Babazul is going to be doing here. I'm going to start things off by setting three cards face down in the field. And during the end phase, you get to see a Performal Pal recasting activated. And this is a normal spell, lol. So you cannot activate this on your opponent's turn. And apparently there's actually Performal Pals in your hand? That's not a Performal Pal. Bro, what are you doing? Alright, it looks like this guy doesn't know how to play. Uh-oh. I was about to say, heroic challengers equals prefer repels. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> well, uh, I'm sorry about this one, guys. Unfortunately, it looks like this guy does not know how to play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. 
he's so low rated and so new that he's just going to be pressing random buttons here. And yeah, apparently this Warhammer is going to be going to the graveyard. And he's going to put a random card to the top of the deck. Oh no, what am I doing? What did I get myself into, guys? What the frick did I get myself into? I don't, I don't know what I got myself into. Oh, so he is playing for Permal Pals. There's Permal Pal Coin Dragon Normal Summon from Reggie. And apparently his opponent doesn't even care that he's like messing up all this stuff. Here is Trojan Gladiator Beast. Special Summon a Gladiator Beast monster from your hand to your side of the field and your opponent draws a card. Unfortunately, you don't have any cards in your hand. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this guy doesn't know how to play. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about about to say Lamu, and I said Lamau wrong. Uh oh. All right, so here's that lucky iron axe used again from Babazul. I'm going to equip it to the Blade Knight here. That's going to attack right into the Heroic Challenger Night Watchman. I love how his opponent literally just reveals everything that he had. And his, again, his opponent literally doesn't even care at all. Doesn't even care. Now he's just going to roll a random die, and the die lands on five. Congrats. Congrats on rolling a die, bro. Oh, and now he's going to flip a coin. The suspense is insane. Roll a die, flip a coin, and let's flip another coin. Tails never fails. It lands on tails twice somehow. Uh oh. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure someone's just gonna quit here randomly. Is this duel is going nowhere? I mean, it was entertaining, you know, to see some of this stuff. But it would have been very nice if this guy actually knew how to play the game. He's gonna overlay for an invisible exceed. There's no exceeds in. <laughs> oh no! What what did I just watch? Exceed with no extra. <laughs> Alright, this is only 7 minutes long, I'm going to pause the video again and get a third game. Alright guys, here we go, third time the charm, hopefully. Third time we're going to be stalking Babazul here, and it looks like his opponent actually knows how to play the game, thankfully. His username is MadDucky04. He's a pretty mad duck, apparently. <laughs> Here's an X-Saber Anu Piranha normal summon. 1800 attack vanilla monster and again for the third straight game you get to see this powerful lucky iron axe man Gains 500 attack this face up card to control strawberry opponent's card effect. You can also draw the cards. So I mean Dang, I, I just don't see this lucky iron axe really doing anything though Seems like axe of despair or something would just be better, but whatever so this X saber piranha is gonna get in for 2300 here and Mad Ducky accidentally lost 18 other life points instead because reading is hard. It's so hard to read one sentence of a card these days. It's so hard. Why is it so hard to read, guys? Why? And I don't know why he took an extra 15. All right, my bad. It looks like this guy doesn't know how to play the game either. Just kidding. I thought Mad Ducky actually knew how to play the game, but apparently his math skills does not show that he actually knows how to do the game. Oh my god. Well then. We should just name this Rage Quits with the return of a number one fan. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea, man. It's, al it's always great to have Umbreon back here, you know. He's been busy with high school lately and stuff, but it's very good to have one of my all-time... Longest number one fans back in a live episode of Lori to Duelist here in the Watchers chat. Great stuff. I have no idea why Mad Ducky lost extra life points for absolutely no reason. He was supposed to lose only 23, but he lost 30, 33 instead, actually. So, yeah, you might want to gain back a thousand life points, lol. So, let's see what Mad Ducky's going to do. There's a Lightning Vortex activated. It's a free Neg 1, if I do say so myself. Going to give up two cards to only kill one. Pitching the Neo Parshath, the Sky Paladin is cost. And thankfully, Mad Ducky, he actually knows how to use Lightning Vortex. I remember in the last episode of Low Rated Duelist last week, oh, they kept on messing up the discard cards like there is no tomorrow. If you've not seen that episode of Low Rated Duelist 
last week. I highly recommend you check that out because they just kept messing up the discard cards. It was not even funny, man. So the Lucky Iron Axe will go to Graveyard by Card Effect. This card is destroyed by your opponent's card effect sent to the graveyard. I do not believe you actually draw left that Lucky Iron Axe. It will be sent to Grave due to a game mechanic. And there's a giant true nade activated. Don't really know what that's going to accomplish in this current situation. That's still a neg one technically. So the one set card from Babazool will get bounced to the hand. Essentially what Hey True Nade would be doing in this current situation. Hey True Nade! Reference never gets old and it looks like this was the biggest waste of a giant True Nade ever because you're not actually going to commit to a play whatsoever. Alright, nice waste bro. Nice freaking waste. That is what you kids call a waste. Are you supplying Papa John's? <laughs> I am not supplying Papa John's unfortunately. I wish I was. It's Jets, obviously. <laughs> uh man. That was such a waste of a giant true nade, by the way. Like, what what was the point? It's like I I just don't understand the point of activating this card at all. Here's a vampire koala normal summon from Babazul. This card inflicts battle damage to your opponent. By battle with this monster, you can gain life points equal to the battle damage inflicted, and here's a numerous Numi, numinous Healer activated. So when you take life points, increase them by a thousand. Okay, then. So he's going to gain a thousand, but you still have to take 18. So essentially, this just was like a slow Diane Quito the Cure. That's basically what this is. It's basically a terrible version of Diane Quito the Cure Master in this card. It also has another effect that you can gain an extra 500 for each copy of this card in your graveyard. So if you have like two additional copies of it in your graveyard and you play your third and final Numinous Healer, you can actually gain 2,000 instead of 1,000. That's double as good as Diane Keto the Cure Master. Best card confirmed. Why would anyone not play this card? Oh my god. Thanks, son. So let's see what Mad Ducky's going to be doing here. He's going to be setting one card to phase down on the field. And he only has three cards to work with. That's the problem when he took, you know, three Neg 1s. He took a Neg 1 off this, a Neg 1 off this, and a Neg 1 off that. And here's a Boo Mudora normal summon. This gains 200 attack for each Fiend-type monster in your graveyard. And this is a Fairy, not a Fiend. So it looks like this effect is 100% useless and... Seems like Mad Ducky still cannot find a way to deal with this vampire koala here. Ouch. Like, where do they find these cards? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, right, man. This is so horrid. Yeah, these cards are so terrible, man. Hey, it's low rated duelist. It's everyone's favorite segment for a reason, man. Wait, how does this have 1700 attack? Reach. Oh, it said fairy, not fiend. Oh, I, I can't read apparently. I thought it said fiend. Well, that's my problem. Unfortunately, Stew Dog still cannot read after all these years. I still am a terrible reader. And uh, this actually says fairy instead of fiend, but it doesn't really matter as the vampire koala still has more attack points than it, even with the effect being active. So, alrighty then. So here's another copy of Lucky Iron Axe activated from Babazool, and this will increase the Vampire Koala to a powerful, to a scary, to a devastating 2300 attack points. Oh my god. I don't believe it. And here's an Option Hunter activated. So when a monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can gain life points equal to the original attack of the destroyed monster. And again, that's another free neg one right there. So, I mean, that's the problem in Yu-Gi-Oh! You play all these life point gain cards, you know, like Option Healer and the Numinous Healer. Or an Option Hunter, rather. And you're still going to be losing the duel because you're just giving away free cards for no reason, you know? They find it from Stewie's vids, obviously. Yeah, I know, right? Well, I don't really know. I mean, we've seen Lucky Iron Axe plenty of times in the past. We've seen Lightning Vortex, but I don't think we've ever seen these three cards 
right here and like ever in the history of my low rated do list segment that has almost been up to 200 episodes and just to think the low rated do list playlist on my channel is around 50,000 has around 50,000 views and might even be at 50,000 views on just a playlist which is crazy talk so big thanks to everyone for getting my low rated do list playlist up to 50,000 views great stuff means a lot couldn't have done it without you guys and it looks like Mad Ducky is going to be gaining back all of his life points here. Don't really know why. And there's an Absolute Crusader normal summoned. And, alright, so apparently he misclicked there. And he's down all the way to just a thousand life points here. There we go. Yeah, buddy. And it looks like Mad Ducky will not be winning this duel, unfortunately. It's just... Some of these card choices are just flat out horrendous, man. I mean, these hunter and healer cards just accomplished absolutely nothing. But it looks like it is somewhat of a fairy deck for Mad Ducky. Still have to lose another 500 thanks to the lucky Iron Axe. And now he's going to have one last turn to try to get himself back in this duel. I have no idea how he's going to do that, but hey, anything's possible, man. So uh, let's see, Mad Ducky, three cards in hand to work with. Still have Regeki and Dark Hole. But even if you do have one of those two cards, you still are going to need some form of a trap card to protect your life points, because then all Babuzu has to do is summon anything with 500 more attack. He could summon a Max C and poke for game. Oh! That's right, Max C's banned. <laughs> Why? And, alright, so he, I thought it was a rage quit. I was looking away for the screen for a little bit. I looked back and saw him already gone. I thought it was a rage quit, but he actually did admit defeat, but uh, I still want to say rage quit. And it looks like Babazul, he went 3-0. and His deck, too strong. Lucky Iron Axe, too OP, and he won every single duel that he played in this episode of Lower Rated Duelist. I mean, that's just insane stuff. So thank you all for watching this episode, as always, and big thanks to having Duke Kid one and Pokemon Umbreon here in the Watcher's chat. And that's all I got for this episode of Lori to do So thanks for watching, guys. And until next week when we'll have some more, that's all I got. This has been Stew Dog, and I'm signing out. And have a great day, everyone.